today we talk about Wisp. Okay, I'm cutting straight to the point. She's sick. Dummy sick. How this past development, I have no idea. Yeah, yeah, sure, make her default helmet cover it all, but don't lie to me. The first thing you did when getting Wisp was replacing that stock helmet before you even left the orbiter. Wisp is... um... I actually don't really know what Wisp is. Apparently she's supposed to be this ghost-ish? Eerie, elusive, enigmatic. Haunting the spatial crossroads between dimensional doorways, the ethereal enchantress Wisp summons strange apparitions from beyond the breach, sever her soul to escape death, steal the light from enemy eyes, and vaporize all before the blaze of our celestial light. So she's an ethereal enchantress. Yeah, I can kind of see it. Wisp was first released back in Update 25, the Jovian Concord, and arguably one of the best updates in recent times. This update introduced a lot of juicy content that remains relevant to this day. Disruption, the Jupiter tile set rework, kick-ass weapons, and Wisp. Wisp is pretty interesting, and when diving into her actual design, theme, and abilities, she offers a lot more than just being dummy thick. She's this offensive support that provides utility and damage to the team, as well as having unique mechanics that try to represent her overall enchantressness per se. I say try to because, um, in all honesty, it doesn't really feel that way. She is stated to be this epic mage of sorts, yet she doesn't really have any abilities like a mage should. Actually, Wisp is much like Octavia, a set-and-forget character. Yeah, it's a bit disappointing, but that's kind of it. But in all fairness, this isn't really her fault. Her prime abilities outshine her actual theme, and as a result, the abilities that try to reflect Wisp don't get that much attention. Mainly because the abilities that do make Wisp popular are due to the way the game is being designed and through level creep and power creep and all that mumbo-jumbo. Wisp is the go-to support, and the reason for that isn't because of how much healing or damage mitigation she can provide, it's simply due to the fact that Wisp isn't a traditional support amongst the likes of Trinity or Oberon. She's an offensive support that plays well into the meta. And while Wisp may have been released in 2019, which is only a few years ago, during that time, Warframe has been through a lot of development and updates. We got the Lich System, Railjack, Deadlock Protocol, the Heart of Deimos, and Sisters of Parvos. But throughout the years, the game kept getting more and more power with each new system being introduced. Older frames needed a lot of catching up to do and much needed reworks and updates. And others who haven't received much love are stranded to the wayside. Wisp perfectly fits into the game's power creep. And no matter what mission you're running, having a Wisp is always beneficial, despite having a weird and mixed kit. And all of this has to do with Wisp's support. Her motes. Wisp is unique in a sense where she doesn't actively apply bonuses like Trinity or Oberon. All Wisp does is place down her motes and that's it. Walk over them, get buffs, and go on with your day. It's an extremely simple yet effective method of support. You don't need to lock onto an enemy to get energy or health. You don't need to be in range to give health restoration. You don't need to keep your energy up for regeneration, just pop the moat and go. And it fits with this fast-paced style of modern Warframe. And when you can't find yourself supporting the team, just use the moats for yourself and go about your business. The buffs that Wisp provides are so powerful and useful that Wisp alone can be categorized as a DPS frame too. Free fire rate, attack speed, move speed, and health regeneration for just existing. That's a lot of buffs many frames dream of, yet Wisp just casually tosses it left and right. And as for the damage boosting capabilities, yeah, she's got that covered. But that's really it. Wisp offers as much as the game needs her to offer. It's a strange situation because other friends with incomplete kits suffer drastically, yet Wisp is able to get away with it because her key abilities are that good. So good that it doesn't matter if the rest of the kit sucks. And even on release out the gate, Wisp was crazy good. 
She was an excellent frame to release alongside the new Disruption game mode and event. Very useful for open worlds and was seen glitched in the Plague Star event. And... Yeah, that's it. Much like Octavia, Wisp mainly got fixes over the years. The major change she did receive was shortly after Update 25. In Update 25.1, Breach Surge now guarantees a spark when you land the killing blow, and the base range of the surge was increased. This allowed Breach Surge to be used much easier, which was a good thing, considering this ability is stupid broken. And the subzoom system unlocked Wisp, so now every frame can just get this ridiculous damage buffer. But because Wisp has one more crazy strong ability, she didn't see any usage drop, unlike a certain Warframe with his main bread and butter. And with the introduction of Fused Reservoir, the only pain point in her kit was fixed. It's been nothing but an uphill ride for Wisp. The only negative aspect to her is that half her kit is not as strong. Soul Gate and Will O' Wisp are not as powerful as Reservoir and Breach Surge. But with all that said, I guess we can talk about those abilities that are less popular. So, how is Wisp in 2023? Wisp weaves between dimensions and while she's airborne, she gains a cloak and goes invisible until she lands or fires a weapon. The cloak will reactivate briefly after the player stops firing, provided they are still airborne. The cloak does not wear off immediately after landing, allowing Wisp to constantly remain invisible. Hard landings, however, will dissipate the cloak immediately, and silenced weapons unfortunately will still remove her invisibility. The invisibility is not affected by melee weapons, so Wisp can freely use them without making her visible. And unlike other invisible abilities, Wisp does not turn transparent. Instead, she visually glows and emits energy particles that are affected by her chosen energy color. This passive is quite powerful when used correctly, as Wisp can become very tanky through movement and mobility. The only downside is, this passive doesn't work with silent weapons, which is a bit of a letdown. Wisp's first ability is her bread and butter, Reservoir. Wisp can toggle between three moats, and hold casting will place the selected moat. Apparently, these moats are birthed from Wisp's dimensional habitat. Yeah, if Wisp can summon these moats that are a fraction of her homeland, one can imagine what other shenanigans she can pull out the back door. The pods are affected by range, duration, and efficiency, but the number of pods are not affected by mods. Casting an additional pod will replace the oldest pod. There are three different pods Wisp can summon, the first being Vitality, which is in the name. It's a health pod that increases health and gives health regeneration. The second pod being Haste, which is also in the name, the pod that will provide movement speed, attack speed, and a fire rate boost. And the last pod is a shock pod, which gives you a shocking aura, and if enemies are nearby, they get a guaranteed stun effect. The vitality mode increases max health by 300 and restores 30 health per second at base. Haste mode gives 20% movement speed and attack speed and a fire rate boost by 30% at base. And the shock mode stores an electrical charge that zaps up to 5 enemies within 15 meters with chain lightning dealing 10 electric damage with a 100% status chance to stun enemies. This ability on its own is what defined Wisp from the get-go. These buffs are so valuable on their own, and if Wisp just came with these pods alone, she would have still remained a top-tier Warframe. It's almost scary to think how potent and meta-defying these modes really are. All of the bonuses are beneficial to players. Having extra mobility and attack speed while boosting fire rate and health is just insane, and this is all from her first ability. The electric mode, on the other hand, may not be as useful, but its guaranteed stun effect is very helpful in higher level content, giving Wisp a decent CC option. The main synergy with Reservoir is also with Breach Surge. Upon casting Breach Surge on an active pod, it will teleport Wisp to its location and double the Surge's range. Currently obtained moats will also provide bonuses to Soul Gate, as Vitality gives a 25% damage increase and Haste allows the Soul Gate to deal corrosive procs on every damage instance. 
and Shock gives another 25% damage increase. But we will discuss Soul Gate more when we get to Wisp's ultimate. What's also not mentioned here is that the reservoirs themselves have an infinite duration, meaning if the paws don't come into contact with a nullifier, they will remain on the ground available forever, which makes Wisp super powerful on defense and survival as you don't have to worry about recasting the pods anytime soon. Reservoir also has one exless augment called Fused Reservoir, which lets Wisp summon all three pods into one cast at the cost of 200% more energy. This mod is basically an auto install for 90% of builds as being able to just cast three pods in one go without having to toggle between the most is a huge quality of life bonus to Wisp. In general, Reservoir is a very powerful ability that boosts the entire team's DPS and makes Wisp a super valuable Warframe in any content. Wisp's second ability is Will-O-Wisp. And no, not the Pokemon ability. Wisp summons a Ghost Clone that travels forward, distracting enemies nearby. Hold cast in the ability will have the clone travel faster and will let Wisp teleport to his location on release. During this state, Wisp is completely invisible until the clone dissipates. The duration is affected by duration mods and energy cost by efficiency. Casting the ability again while the ghost is traveling will dissipate the cloak and clone early, then instantly teleporting Wisp to its location. After teleportation, Wisp gains invulnerability for 3 seconds. The invulnerable state is not affected by mods. The main synergy with Will-O-Wisp is the ghost can pluck motes from a reservoir and pass it through during its lifetime. Casting Breeze Surge while the clone is active will create a second expansion around the clone, which makes DPSing with Breeze Surge even easier and more potent. You can also cast Will-O-Wisp while casting Soul Gate, which gives Wisp some brief invulnerability while in the Soul Gate animation. The clone itself is also a flying object that attempts to continue its path when colliding with terrain. The clone can also surprisingly open doors when in proximity. This ability may not seem like it's the most useful, and definitely not as useful as Reservoir, but it still holds some decent synergy with Wisp and gives her brief invisibility and minor CC, which is always useful. Sometimes you may find yourself subsuming this one out, as her passive functions similarly, but in high level content it's still pretty useful. Up next we have Breach Surge, which is one of the most broken damage abilities in the entire game. Wisp collapses a portal into an energy explosion that rapidly expands over an 18 meter radius area around the cast location. Enemies in direct line of sight or within range are blinded by the surge for 16 seconds, and when struck by damage from weapons and abilities, blinded enemies have a 10% chance to release a surge spark in the form of a homing projectile that seeks the head of another enemy within 10 meters, dealing radiation damage equal to the damage dealt to the surged enemy, then amplifying a damage multiplier of 2 and a 20% status chance. The damage multiplier is boosted by strength mods, the sparks are affected by mods like Vigor's Swap and Arcane Arachne, and other damage boosting abilities like Eclipse or Rift Torrent. The range is affected by ability range, blind duration by duration, energy cost by efficiency, and the chance to release Surge Sparks and Spark Seek range are not affected by mods, and killing blinded enemies have a 100% chance to release another spark. Blinded enemies are also susceptible to stealth damage bonus, but are not vulnerable to melee finishers. Surge Sparks have a critical multiplier of 1.5 and can score critical headshots due to their homing properties. The Surge Sparks will also attempt to home in on nearby enemy during flight, and without a target to strike, Surge Sparks will randomly impact onto a nearby surface and explode. Unfortunately, Surge Sparks cannot be created by a kill made by another Surge Spark. To keep this ability very simple, Wisp will amplify your damage when shooting enemies affected by the sparks, and this damage amplifier is one of the highest in the entire game. It is insanely broken. You will start to see numbers in the millions very quickly, and Steel Path becomes a total breeze with Breach Surge. It helps that the Surge has a pretty good radius to start with, so you can easily slaughter crowds of enemies in an instant. The 10% spark release might also sound low, 
But when factoring in enemy density and higher level content, you find the sparks will more often than not spread, thus further increasing the DPS. This ability is just so good. There isn't enough great things to say about Breach Surge, and it's just a beautiful damage boosting ability. The best part about it is that it's also a sub zoom, so every frame can use this, which is just insane. The Surge also has some synergies with Reservoir, so casting it on a placed moat will teleport Wisp to said moat and doubles the Surge range. And casting Surge while the Ghost of Willow Wisp is active will create a second expansion around the clone. And Soul Gate's Plasma Beam have a 100% chance to trigger a Surge Spark on every hit, thus spreading the sparks very quickly. Breeze Surge also has one augment called Critical Surge, and... It's not too shabby as it's an additive crit bonus, so it can be useful for some primary weapons. There just isn't enough good things to say about Breach Surge. It's just crazy strong. And finally, the ultimate. Now, to be honest, Soulgate isn't as strong as her other abilities, despite having synergies with the rest of her kit. Soulgate is a bit lackluster, but on its own, it's not too bad. Wisp tears open and sustains a portal to the sun. Wait, excuse me? The sun? And harnesses its destructive power. Wisp will summon a plasma beam with curving flares over a length of 40 meters. The beam has infinite punch through against enemy bodies and inflicts head and radiation damage per 0.5 seconds. Unfortunately, the status chance is unknown. Each enemy that receives damage from the beam are more vulnerable to it with the beam damage increasing by 50% per half second up to a maximum of 500% per instance. This damage per half second is also boosted by strength and the length is affected by range. Unfortunately, the beam ramp up is not affected by any mods. Wisp can also use Willow Wisp and move while the ability is being used. And while Soulgate is active, the reservoirs on Wisp will emit the beam and further amplifying it. Holding the trigger will increase the beam's damage by 3000 and the ramp up per half second is increased to 100% up to a max of 1000% but at the cost of more energy consumption. And as mentioned earlier, the most will boost the beam, giving it 50% more damage and corrosive procs on each instance, making it quite effective against armored enemies. While this ability may be the weaker aspect of her kit, it's still a very solid large area damage ability and synergizes well with Breach Surge, as it allows a 100% spark chance per hit. Though to be fair, this is the weakest aspect of Wisp's kit. This ability is still very strong on its own when taking it out of context, which shows how powerful and potent Wisp is. And if you want to further boost the capabilities of Wisp, slap on some Archon Shards and call it a day. And that's pretty much it. Wisp. She's broken. Like, actually broken. Pause with infinite duration buffs that boost every single build possible, and a huge burst of damage from Breach Surge. While Willow Wisp and Soulgate are the weaker aspects of her kit, it doesn't matter. Wisp is just too broken because of her 1 in 3. And Wisp will continue to dominate the game in the foreseeable future. She is the best support and provides the best offense. Wisp is crucial for any high level content and will make anyone's day better. Both literally and literally. Wisp is fantastic and super easy to use. If you don't own her, I highly suggest taking the time to farm the Ropalolus boss fight. It may be a tedious fight, but the reward is well worth the hassle. Wisp will not disappoint you. Anyways, that's going to be it for me. If you enjoy content like this, then be sure to hit that like button and subscribe. Your support is greatly appreciated. What are your thoughts about Wisp? Do you think she's worth the grind? Let me know your thoughts down below and I will see you guys next time. Peace.